Before so. we start, I have a gift for you, my, my friend. <laughs> he finally brought it. The most ridiculous shirt. <laughs> Damn, dude, Baby Yoda and LaRona. Oh, I thought it was the gremlin thing at first. For everyone listening on audio, it's uh, Baby Yoda holding a Pepsi symbol wearing a mask. <laughs> With the uh, coronavirus, COVID-19 little residuals floating in the background. It says, I can't stay at home. I work at Pepsi. We fight when others can't anymore. <laughs> that makes no sense. Is that how intense I, yeah, it is? Yeah, dude. I, yeah. I actually fought somebody at work. <laughs> yeah. Remember? I told you about that at a food just line. Tell me again. I don't that remember. was just some redneck, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What happened? It was, uh, I was minding my own business, working one day. Here, but <clears throat> Thank you, man. I appreciate it. This is uh, sick merch. <laughs> Thank you. I love Yoda. I've never seen The Mandalorian. I was at work, Pepsi. At a food line in Brooklyn. I'm like going back to get more back stock out of the back room and I've got this like U boat cart and I'll, I hear in like one of the aisles coming barreling ass and I hear this guy like talking to his kid, joking around like, all right, slow down, slow down. And he comes at me and, and I'm, I'm walking by and I stop and he like slams, like slams his brakes on. He's just like, what the fuck? And I was, and I, I just was like, oh shit. I thought he was talking to his kid and he was like, I told you to slow down and he, and I'm just like, I just kept walking. I was like, all right, sorry. I said sorry, like we almost hit, but like we're good. So then next thing you know it, I'm walking, and then the guy's talking shit. And I was just like. To you? To me. And I thought he was still talking. And I like I turned my back, and I was like, I, I look at the guy, and I'm like, I thought we were done here. Like, wh- what's, what's the problem is? And he's like, the fuck are you doing? He's like, who the fuck do you think you are? And I was like, it doesn't matter. I was like, I, I, so I was like, I'm just working and he's like i got up at 7 a.m this morning and i was like i've been working since four bro i don't want to hear it and it was like four o'clock in the afternoon at this point it was like a long 12 hour day so he's coming at me and he's yelling and cussing and then like i can see it in his eyes bloodshot and like this is during covid dude and he's got like snot running down his nose and his (laughs) and like he's he's got his like child dude like a three-year-old kid boy is sitting there just looking up at him and like just like like he's kind of like just like dazed like a little toddler would be and this guy's just cussing at me like cussing like throwing every cuss word at me and i'm like for real dude like is this really happening right now i was like you're gonna do this in front of your child and in a public in a public in a (laughs) food line grocery store or in the afternoon and he's got like one of those paper masks and it's like under his nose and he's all like Oh. You know, breathing. Patient zero, Yeah, dude. and I'm just like, Jesus Christ. And then I could just smell the alcohol billowing oh. off of him. Like, uh, just like terrible, cheap so vodka. He's got problems. Yeah. So he was like, do you think I'm a piece of shit? And I was like, what? <laughs> kind no, of. Yeah. yeah, yeah, now, yeah. Now I was I like, do. Right? like, call yourself out, dude. Like, it's just me, dude. Like, I'm not, I'm not here to judge nobody. Like, And then, like, I was like, whatever, dude. I was like, I'm done with this. So I walk in the back room. And then, like, two seconds later, the manager of the store comes barreling ass back there. She's like hot. She was hot to trot. She comes, she like kicks the doors in and she starts yelling at one of her coworkers who kind of looks like me, a big guy. And she's like, what the fuck did you do to this guy out there? And he's like, I've been in the freezer. And I'll go, oh, I, I guess that was me. Like this dude thinks I hit him with the cart and I didn't. And she's like, you yeah. weren't shopping. Why I was, I was, and I was like, what the hell, dude? And, and then she's like, she's like, well, what the, you need to come out here and, and, and talk to this guy. And I was like, oh, okay. So the guy's still out there fucking hemming and hawing. <laughs> and I'm sitting here like, what do you want from me, dude? And then, I, and then I got heated. I was trying to be professional. I'm in a uniform. I'm not trying to start anything. Like I was like, I just had started working here. And I was like, dude, I don't want to fight this dude. But if he comes at me, like, it's done. Like, I'm going for it. <laughs> and so he's going off. He's cussing me. He's, like, doing all this shit. Like, just whipping, like, just all these curse words. Are we fucking done here? I was like, I'm done. He's like, apologize to me. And I have my mask on. And I was like, okay, dude, I'm sorry to inconvenience you. But, all right, are we done here? Like, I just was trying to do my job. Yeah. And he's like, no, man, take your mask down and tell me you're sorry. And I was like, absolutely not. I was like, <laughs> I my droplets. I was like, I was like, not only that, I was like, you're, you're gushing like snot out of your nose. <laughs> your mask is and wet. And your eyes are bloodshot. Yeah. You look like you've been on a bender for days now. Like maybe you did get up at seven to start that, hitting that bottle <laughs> yeah. hard, which is fine, man. Whatever, you know, get through through the day. But you have your fucking child with you, dude. The three-year-old kid. And you drove here. And you drove here. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. then he's Degenerate. like going off. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I was like, I guess you are a piece of shit. And then I just storm in the back. And, and then he's like, that's it. I'm fucking waiting for you in the parking lot. And I was like, all right, dude. Like, I'll see you there. So 
Um, I, I finish up. I finish up, <laughs> and everyone at the work is like, "Whoa, what the hell's going on here?" And I walk outside, and the dude's in my fucking face, and he like swings, and I just go one time, right to the face, <laughs> like punched him like right in the nose, and like he staggers and like falls back, and then I was like. All right, dude. Like, you good? You good? And he's like, uh, and I was just like, and I just looked at his kid, and I was like, I'm so sorry for you. Like, I, Jeez, like, you're man. gonna have a really bad life. You should take it. You're I my son. Now. And then, yeah, apparently, I'm your new dad. They wouldn't let him drive, so then he like picked his kid up and started walking across the street, like dude. onto 648, which is a busy road, yeah. and almost gets hit by a car. <laughs> I didn't know and the I was like, math. yeah, dude. And yeah. it was like terrible. And I was like, all right, dude. So like, you know, the cops were called and like everything was taken oh, care of. Your boy's still lethal. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, How dude. How big was this guy though? Man either, dude. Come yeah, on. Yeah, he was small. Yeah, like a lot of people are smaller than me though. So I that's figured not it was like a scrawny, like yeah. Bernie yeah. type. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. yeah. White trash, yeah. piece yeah. of shit. Just yeah. like five pounds soaking yeah. wet because he yeah. drinks Rickle off. Yeah, Rickle off all the time. Brushes the teeth with it. Yeah, I already went to my shift. Yeah, it was drinking fucking yeah. Ricky all yeah, day, yeah, dude. Ricky, yeah, the Ricky. And sorry, yeah, I brushed my teeth. I had rumplements. Yeah, like, you know, I had the mouth. Been drinking Listerine yeah. since fucking four a.m., bitch. What are you yeah. talking about, yeah, dude? So yeah, that was that was an interesting. Okay, yeah. well, Day work. Uh, welcome to so the. Thank you. Hey, welcome to the Heavy Wrist Podcast. <laughs> welcome episode to the episode twelve ish. Welcome to the the Heavy Wrist Finance Hour. Yeah, which is uh, my man's Bruce. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Bruce. Yeah. Bruce. <laughs> so yeah, we have a we have a guest. Is this the first visual guest? No, no, no. Well, to while camera. I was here, camera was on. While you were Cameron, Cam- we Cameron didn't have was the on. Cameras for Cameron. We didn't have no the cameras, cameras for Cameron. But I, I did that one. No, cam- no Cameron. No, because I had a uh, I had Tucker and Captain Ron. Oh, Tales yeah, from the Squall. Oh shit! Did, that's you, a did you finish that episode? I didn't even watch it. Like I didn't even turn it on. Okay. And I'm not mad. I just literally didn't even watch. Well, it. Well, if you haven't, you should because towards the end. So Captain Ron is named Captain Ron for a reason. He starts telling stories about like people dying on the open water that he witnessed. What? Captain Ron is fucking wild. Yeah? Like, he's just a wild... He's a boatsman. He's a boatsman. He's a yeah. waterman. He's a boatsman. <laughs> he's a coxman. <laughs> he's, he's a coxman. <laughs> yeah. And towards the end of the episode, we t- start talking about being on boats during crazy storms. And he's like... He was like, dude, I get emotional just talking about this. And I was like, oh, shit. And I got, I, I got like goosebumps. And I was like, you don't have to continue. He was like, "No, I need you." <laughs> uh, oh, shit. And he was like, uh, "He was what telling book are you reading, man? Like, it's, this is some true <laughs> yeah. fucking water t- yeah. man water shit. Water tales, dude. Water tales. Tales from the really? squall, <laughs> dude. It's a wonderful episode. Yeah. You need yeah. to watch. All right, it. I really is it squalls on the Chesapeake Bay. Bullshit! Though. I've yeah. been through it. Yeah. Watch the episode, the episode. Have you ever seen uh, that movie White Squall? Not a lot of people. So let me get back on track. Bruce, Bruce is a guest. Saying in the ocean, this. I mean, that's where you like lobster fishermen. I get like and crab. You know. You're in the ocean. Yeah, when it's you're off the rougher course water of Antarctica, Bay, yeah. Yeah. fucking deep saying. sea. No, dude. Dude, have no, you ever yeah, been in the dude. bay? The bay gets rough, dude. It's not for the fan of heart. I have been in the bay, but it's... You it, ever it's, fallen it's, off a boat? It's never... No, I haven't you fallen. You ever almost lose And I, I can swim. I can swim, so, you know. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm a, oh, yeah. Well, you, I I'm watch a swimmer. Yeah, I'm yeah. a swimmer. Welcome to the Heavy Riffs Podcast. Thank you. The Heavy Riffs Finance Hour, Ooh. where a guy who knows about money yeah. talks to two guys <laughs> who know jack shit about money. Yeah. yeah. I know how to spend it. That's bad. Dude, I've spent probably, like... Two thousand dollars on all this equipment, yeah, right. and have seen zero in return. Yeah, so we can talk about that. Are you trying to seek ads it's, for the it, podcast? Yeah, it's on, it's yeah. on the horizon. We're looking right. for well, anyone. like in cases like that to to make the losses deductible. You really, you know, you gotta generate some money within yeah. the next year or so. Can't you keep showing year after year losses because the IRS will challenge you, yes. and you'll have to pay a bunch of tax. Re- running the space and. All the equipment would be deductible. So the the podcast. I mean, now. some of the equipment you might have to capitalize, but I, I, you know, with the with the tax law as it is now, you could just deduct everything up front, probably. As long as you can prove you're seeking advertisers, I don't, I don't really know what the whole setup. Is. There isn't any. There is. I haven't okay. done anything. Yeah. There's right. no. Yeah. Dude, that's why we have people. Well, that's like, why you. you have, I mean, that's like you gotta decide that. Logistics. I mean, you know, if it's just gonna be you owning it, or if it's because you said you've done podcast without Justin you know, on you it. You have so to be trying to generate revenue for it to be a business. Yes. Otherwise, it's a hobby. 
one hundred percent thing. I no, mean, no, 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 one hundred percent. And this is what my IRS, I'm learning hobbies right like will fucking. I mean, they'll uh, disallow the expenses. Basically, what about After if it's a years. nonprofit? No, I mean, it, <laughs> <laughs> no, we it's are pretty total much, for as, profit. As, I haven't looked yeah, at it in a while, know, but <laughs> as far as I remember, it's gotten to the point where you can't deduct shit anything for hobbies unless you make money off it. Well, oh. so you can deduct a hobby for three years so until make, the IRS says, Mister Valiant or Mister Miller. This is a hobby, yeah. not a business. I mean, so you that's can what happened for as many years as you want. You're just playing audit lotto, though. I yes, mean, you know, oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Audit lotto, and that's what happened with Mountain Wolf. Like, you know. I, I wrote off like all, all these amps, yeah, all this shit because Mountain Wolf had money coming in. So right, the, the disclosure: Mountain Wolf would make like ten thousand dollars a year. Yeah, like nothing to live on. No, mm -hmm. we would spend probably like eleven to twelve on like gear and advertising. So like that's how I worked it out. Yeah, and I was able to do that for three years because you're allowed to write off losses for three years, and then they cut you off. You can take losses back. You used to be able to take them back three years. I think you can take them back two years now, but you can carry for, carry them forward for twenty years. You're doing the Amazon strategy, which is you lose money for twenty years, and but just build enough investors that you can and take off take over enough of the market share where you can just start raising your prices a little bit and just make all the. I mean, that's why. Bezos has gone from what, like you know he's his fortune skyrocketed the past like, oh ten God, years. I mean, fucking he's owned Amazon for like what twenty five years now, but it's yeah. been the past ten years where it's gotten crazy. It's gotten crazy, you know. That's and nuts. he started that shit by selling fucking used books in his garage, dude. Yeah, it was just a bookstore to start out. How with. How crazy is that? Barnes and Noble to Bosch. see like <laughs> <laughs> you had fucking yeah. no, forty see, year yeah, head start. They had all Let's of it. just buy was, all the nicest real estate in that's every city what, and then charge so, yeah. full retail yeah. for yeah. the I books. Have a, I have a question. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're in like a very cash flow heavy business, let's say you have a product that's right. like new to the market and you advertise on. Instagram, just something that you know will sell, like a pizza fucking apron. Let's just say a pizza apron. Oh, so you where you're like relying on just selling a bunch of things. Direct to consumer. Okay, yeah. Like, well, a, let's re just, like, a, let's retail, just, like a retail thing. Yes, Yeah. pure retail. And you figure out how to source these aprons for uh, like $3 a pop. You sell them for $25 a pop. Right. Let's just say in this scenario, you're pulling in cash flow a hundred grand a month right but you're not really like you know you're advertising the shit out of it so maybe you're spending 95 grand a month on advertising okay but let's say that you you know the you have a hundred thousand dollar credit card limit you're maxing those out on advertising but you're you actually have the product and you're shipping it and you're bringing in a hundred thousand dollars a month right and then you're taking so you're that, making five thousand dollars a month you're making well, yeah. So you're, I your mean, your only cost net are, profit. You're making five thousand right. dollars a month, okay. but yeah. you're not paying your your credit card bill, and you're taking all that money and then investing it into the markets. I've, I've seen I've seen advertisements. So you're taking the business's money, investing you're it in the, the markets. Business, because okay. let's say you're one guy doing this. Right. It's I mean, you have dangerous. to be a really confident investor because the credit <laughs> yeah, card right? that's a gamble. That's credit a crazy cards, game. Yeah, credit cards charge charge like twelve percent, fourteen percent interest a year. So I mean, like you have to, you well, would have to make more than that on your investment Absolutely. to make any money, yeah. which is dumb because not many people make that much. But in our crazy they're not professional. Like I mean, they're not like hedge fund managers who can like you know make exorbitant returns they're just regular people so no that'd be a dumb idea that would be a really yeah. dumb All right, idea because I've Damn. seen recently <laughs> well hold Shout on I've, I've seen I've recently seen advertisements for like courses to be like oh I'll show you how to sell t-shirts and then you take the money, like the seed money basically it's, from it's the like t-shirts to reinvest it's like the same thing as people taking money to gamble from the mafia yeah. yeah, thinking they're gonna win. Well, did, didn't the dude? Yeah. <laughs> and then they owe Tony's like breaking your legs. Then they owe ten percent interest within three days. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was either, credit cards aren't that bad, but yeah. it's still pretty bad. Well, I mean, what about if you yeah. sign up for a credit card that's like oh zero percent interest for the first year, which they do have, right? And then you just like max that out for your product. I mean, the thing with credit cards is you should really just try to pay the whole balance each month. You don't want to give them any interest because that's how they make all their money. It's just because it's they, what, charge, they charge like a percent a month. As as my man's Joey Diaz always says, there's no debtor's prison. What are well, they going to do? They'll just you're take dead, all your money. I mean, there's no debtor's prison though. No, I know. The but IRS they'll just, will come after you. They'll yeah. take Not all your us. money. Yeah. 
Not, oh, that's yeah. someone yeah. making you fucking can, 50 I mean, grand a year just yeah. trying to survive. Oh, yeah, but yeah. like, no, the thing is, like, so much of the economy revolves around credit now. If you go bankrupt, you have none for seven years. Like, they can they can hold that against you for seven years, I've got which means you better have so, some nice family members like because how are you going to you. You find a place to live? You it's know? like breaking like, I mean, a mirror, man. Does that reflect if you're trying to rent from somebody? Yeah. yeah, if they do a credit, you, check. they do. They, most places most, do. Most places most do. Places, yeah, most most places do. Places definitely yeah, do. they definitely but do. But you a find check. those fucking wild out oh, yeah, well, in Brooklyn yeah. Park that are like yeah. drinking yeah. brick law. Yeah. Fuck yeah. nine just, yeah. just be like, yeah. I'm staying here. He's like, all right, give me like. Well, yeah, you bucks. could live in one of those places, sure. But I mean, you, like, why would you want to though? Squatters' rights, baby. Yeah. What is the rules for squatters' rights? Fourteen days, dude. Yeah, that's a lawyer thing. I think it varies state by state. I think in Maryland it's fourteen days. So like. Yeah, I literally think we should start going to these like like new construction homes, and just being like, I'm taking it as <laughs> is, dog. <laughs> I'll do it myself. Uh, would, okay, it's, that, a, it's a little more than I knew how to do any of that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's uh, no less than twenty years. Okay, propertymanagement.com. Oh yeah, it's got to be different for each. Yeah. That's something that would be different. It for says each a uh, a squatter can claim rights to a property after residing there for a certain amount of time. In Maryland, it takes twenty years of continuous possession for a squatter to make an wow. adverse. How would that even happen? Claim. In Dude, this I got a guy. Joe, there's some spots in Baltimore that have definitely been abandoned since. 2000. I mean, yeah. let's look at it. It's not that long. Yeah. I was fucking. Yeah, but you're like, you wouldn't have like <laughs> electricity or <laughs> running like water. Very, you live like a goddamn <laughs> yeah. fucking squall boy, dude. Yeah, like, I know, <laughs> but you're in the middle of the city. It's not like you can find stuff to eat. Like, Bruce, we got to take a trip, rats, dog. Without, without money, dogs. without we money, we got to take a trip. City, you know? We got to show Bruce the real city. Man. Yeah, dude, I'll show you. Yeah, He's dude. up there I, in his I, tower. I've driven to shitty parts of Baltimore before, believe me. I just fancy. Yeah. Well, yeah I just don't want, I just don't want to go there. I mean, yeah. it sucks there. So Bruce, so okay, a little backstory. Bruce is a really good friend of mine. Uh I used to he used to be my roommate for many years, dude. Uh love this man to death. He's the shit. Um but you and you are like trying to become president? Is that what you were saying earlier? No. Partner. <laughs> Um, uh, I'm close to being partner in my accounting firm. Partner. So what is a CPA? It's a state licensed accountant that can uh, basically uh, you're you, you're the only people that can sign off on financial statements or tax returns. So what does CPA stand as for? Per, as preparing it for someone else for someone else, you know. Okay. Um, what's CD? What's certified public accountant. Certified public. So I'm licensed in Maryland. You know, I've I've always lived in Maryland. Yeah, so, so you're a Maryland yeah. boy. Yeah, I'm a Maryland boy. So you know uh, how you know the tax laws of Maryland. And the federal uh, government. Yeah, I know. I mean, as far as states go, I would definitely say Maryland more than any other state. Do you but know also about DC, Virginia, uh, New York, don't, don't New York a lot to too. Some. So. Wow. Do you deal with offshore accounts? Can you talk about that? Yeah. Yeah, like in the east. I mean, shore? like uh, I don't do the investments. That that's the people that you know. So you're not into investments. You just make sure I, numbers line up. I yeah. I give you know tax strategies and you know I do audits. Do you work for the mob? Tax consulting. That's what I think. <laughs> this is an interrogation. Yeah. Yeah. I need to turn the lights yeah. back on. I need the light. There's I just a lot. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of stuff. And not many people know what you mean when you say the, when you say the words. On the you know, not, not many people are going to know what I'm talking about when I say what I'm saying. So, you know. I'm sure some people are. Yeah. Have you seen the movie I Love You, Philip Morris? With Jim Carrey? I've yeah. seen the beginning of it, yeah. You need to finish it. Yeah, I've heard it's pretty good. I mean, I, I like Ewan McGregor and, like, train spotting and shit. So, yeah. You know, I yeah. think he actually did heroin to, like, get into character. Yeah, yeah he was movie. really good. He was <laughs> really good. He was just looking for a reason to yeah. do heroin. The, the second Isn't movie everyone? was actually... I've never seen it. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not really looking Only for my boy reason. Andrew's watched the second movie. It's actually really good. Train spotting 2? Yeah. I didn't know there was it's a your sequel. your favorite movie? I said it's really good. Oh. Way Since when is there a sequel to like a really heroin overdoses? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's usually it's like, it's like twenty dead. years later. They're all washed up, basically losers, and they you know they all meet up back in Scotland again. It's pretty good. Actually, actually. you know yeah. what? Yeah. I have seen that. I was on a heavy dose of LSD. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it did. I, uh, you're, yeah, you're dude, you're gonna, connecting yeah. synapses in my brain. You're bringing <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. me back. I've never seen. It's, that it's worth watching. Relatively sober. It's it's actually good. I oh, liked it a lot. Yeah. I liked it a lot. Yeah. Jim Carrey is like, like a gay uh, prisoner or something, right? He is. A, he, I think he, that was. He, he's a gay man who becomes a prisoner multiple times. I thought he was like a repeat felon type guy due to yeah. like a just mainly a bunch of scams. 
Oh, he's like a con man? He's like a con man. Oh, okay. But yeah. one of them, he gets a job at this like high corporate office as their CPA. What do you mean their CPA? Like, Maybe not their CPA, but like, like the, their, their he's account. like their accountant, basically. Oh, okay, Goalkeeper. gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So there's a difference. That is that is a difference. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm a, you know, I, I work for businesses externally. Uh, you're talking about someone like a CFO or a controller. Controller. Who would, who would CFO. Be? That's what he was. He was CFO. a CFO. What he would do with his company as the CFO, mm -hmm. he would notice... Like this large sum of money that would just be sitting doing nothing in between their investments. So what he would do is like put it into a high yield savings account without the company knowing about it, and then steal the interest off because this is back in the eighties when funnel interest it back before into they his, knew his, his own pockets. No, like he oh. would steal it. No, and but then, he he would only be taking the interest. He would be returning the principal, is what you're saying. Yes, he would return the so principal. So he wouldn't get caught. Yeah, I mean, so exactly. But yeah, yeah. the only reason he got caught, according to this movie, I need we need to we need to figure it out, <laughs> dude. There's a dude finance. There's tricks. Oh yeah, the Enron guy was like probably the worst one ever. He'll be with what he happened set with up, Enron? Oh, he well, you know how they like basically defrauded all of their shareholders in the entire Enron? American people. The energy company? Yeah, Enron. Yeah, the, I, I know the about biggest scandal of like Jordan Belfort. Our, our time. Yeah, I know no, about that was, uh, Madoff. We were teenagers when it happened. So, I mean, like, um, you know, the entire board of directors and all the officers were corrupted. Robinson. But the, the main one they, car they carried, they got to carry out some a lot of their stuff was their CFO, who basically just set up a bunch of, um, like, shell companies. Yeah. And uh, funneled m Enron money through them, just so in like Panama. Just around, shit. Like around it, it's really complicated, and they don't explain it all the way through in the movie I saw. But like, uh, which one was that? Was that uh, the one with fucking it's called Meryl the Street? smartest men in the room? No, it's a oh. documentary movie. Oh, okay. He sh sets up a bunch of shell entities, so basically he makes Enron loans not look like loans. He makes it look like they're making money, even though it's a loan. Which would be that, you know, it's the same kind of entry if you're doing accounting. Uh, you would just book a... Like, so what was the crime? You would book that someone owes you money and that you made money. Instead, it was really they got... Oh, wait, no. You would book cash and that you made money. And really, it's cash and so you owe somebody money. And he just moved money around so that it looked like revenue propped their stock price up artificially, even though they were losing billions and billions of dollars every year in cash. They were making a shitload on paper because of... Uh, they were able to jack their start stock price up artificially, and their auditors actually helped too. I mean, they actually Jesus. put they actually put the like the biggest CPA firm in the country out of business. The Enron fraud. They were called Arthur Anderson. We talk a lot about cool conspiracy theories. Yeah. Do you have any conspiracies? And like, well, the conspiracy theory with them was that um, Bush let them off easy because they uh, the the chair of the board of Enron was a huge contributor to George Bush's first presidential so campaign. Owners. Dude, huge, organ donors. Huge so, donors and oh, friends of the Bush family. Oh, yeah. That's deep. Oh, dude, it they're, does. they're all from Texas. I mean, it's, it's, a, comp, ah, it's a Texas company. It's bigger in yeah, Texas. Texas. I need like 10 more minutes of finance and then we can fucking move on. Oh, sure. Just because. No, it's, it's okay. I, I thought it was. I mean, usually it's just boring to people. That's why I didn't want to, like, you know. It's not boring to me. I didn't want to, like, you know. This is my fucking okay, show. Yeah. I, thought, I thought it was just. I thought that was common knowledge. I guess I shouldn't assume that. Fuck no, it's not common knowledge. Because it was, I mean, it was something I heard about a lot in business school. A whole fucking hell of a lot. <laughs> a lot of people haven't been to business Well, no, no. Well, they listen just, to this. But I mean, like, you know, it, it was like in, you know, it was in The Simpsons and shit, too. It was like a well-known thing okay. when that when that, when that that company crashed. Um, I mean, you, well, you're, shit, you just turned 30, so you, you would have only yeah. been. I just turned 29, baby. Oh, shit, 29. It happened in the year 2000. So uh, you were probably, shit. How's my math doing? Um, you were at 19, you were only like nine years old when it happened. I was born in ninety one. So yes, yeah. eight or nine years eight, old. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, I wouldn't. Know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 know. yeah. I didn't really know that much about AIDS growing up either. I was like, <laughs> even though I'm born in nineteen eighty seven, you know, like. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. First goes, I, I was I knew, born in nineteen eighty seven. I didn't know much about AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> All right, like, wait, remember Forrest Gump? Forrest, For, Forrest Gump. I mean, I remember she died of AIDS, but I didn't really know what it was until it was I was older. Genetic, I don't know if it was full blown AIDS. I think it was just the HIV. Well, re real quick before we move on from yeah. finance, I got a couple more questions. Shit. Sure. Just relax. I am. Stupid. I'm with you. I'm this with you. Tight to me. No, it's. Okay. I'm. I'm proud. Have of you this. seen the? I, f I found the movie that I was trying to talk about earlier with Meryl okay. Streep. It's called The Laundromat. Have you seen it? No. Is, is she a money launderer? No. Oh. If you think so. It's about the Panama Papers. Oh, that's uh, 
That was a recent thing. Yeah, it was very recent. So yeah, it was like a, how a bunch of like powerful politicians basically avoided taxes for yeah by like funneling money through international so this, accounts. This movie, The yeah. Laundromat, check it out. Like I, I, everyone should I have, watch. I, it, it, it's on I Netflix. Th- I, I think I have seen it actually. Now that you mention it, I'll, 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 or I've seen something about the Panama. Pa- I've seen something else about the Panama Papers. Rest in peace. Oh yeah, Eddie Vale. Yeah, rest in peace. R.I.P. So the movie starts out with Meryl Streep and her husband. They're on yeah. like a a water taxi, if you will. Right. And the water taxi tips over, and her husband dies, and she goes to claim insurance on it. Yeah, and then it just ends up being like this endless train ride of trying to figure out the insurance that they had been paying for forever. It's yeah, that happened to like time. a lot of people in like Katrina with yeah. the flood insurance, and so that's know, what yeah. ended up happening with it. And it's just like she fucking like traveled to Panama to the company that she had been paying, and it was like just a dude. And his daughter, basically, in a fucking office building, <laughs> like, drinking rum, smoking weed, like, what the fuck's going on here? And she was like, what do you mean? What the fuck's going on here? And then this, like, instigated... Are you sure it's about the Panama Papers? Because that was about, like, the politicians... This So it says... the I thought that Wikipedia was... says the film ends with the leaking of the Panama Papers and subsequent police raids on Mossack Fonseca... Who was like the person that she was uh, buying her insurance from? Oh, okay. So, oh, all right. So, yeah, it was just unrelated. It was a bunch of shell companies that were yeah. like fake insurance. Yeah, agencies. that's exactly. Yeah, that's what. Uh, that, that, like, she brought like this. The Panama woman, Papers wasn't all about like insurance fraud, though. It was no. It yeah. was like a much broader. Yeah, it was like umbrella It was like the the person, the English, the Prime Minister in England had to retire because he had avoided taxes with using the you know. Whatever setup they had with the foreign investments, I so mean, there's it was, a it lot was weird, dude. Going yeah, it, on. Was, it was it was a compli- another complicated thing. Yeah, well, according to this movie, which is like a Hollywood movie, obviously it was overdone and based on a true story. Yeah, this is just someone who has embellished. insurance through the company and is just trying to get paid for her files husband, burning down, hu- husband dying. Oh, husband dying <laughs> in okay. a boating accident. Oh, okay. Which brings me back to Captain Ron. Yeah. <laughs> so. You preface this whole conversation with like you're a CPA. We understand now what that means right. and what you do. Yeah. But so you're not like an investment strategist. No, not at all. So that's a different. That's actually a different degree. That's a finance degree. With that being said, First should I put yeah. all of my money into cryptocurrency, <laughs> or should I invest in the stock market? <laughs> I mean, there have been huge returns for Bitcoin, obviously. Yes. As everyone's heard. Um, maybe I would not put all your money in there. I've put all my money in the crypto. <laughs> yeah. I, would, I would just, I mean, the most stable, successful way to grow your money is through like something like a mutual fund. So, you know, But you do need a lot years. of money to have a fully balanced portfolio. Yeah. You know? Vanguard. So that's yeah. a, uh, I mean, like I said, that, I mean, that's a investment advisor is a question. You know, I'm not, I don't do that. Yeah. So this might be an arbitrary question now. Have you ever been on r slash Wall Street bets? No, I've never. Uh, so it's a bunch it's of people. It's all movie shit. All of them, It's all movie shit I've just looked up for Reddit pretty much. So yeah. you have not been on r slash Wall no. Street bets. Yeah. So what it is is a bunch of people who consider, consider themselves autists and they try to get them fat tendies. But so what they do is they tendies. short the market. Okay. Like, like big. Like they'll right. take a screenshot of their Robin Hood account and be like, I just, I'm a, what's up fellow autists? I mean, they need to have a lot of money to do that. And they do. Oh, okay. All right. Based on these screenshots, it could be like, they could be Photoshop wizards. I'm not sure. How much, I mean, how much are they Like 20 talking? grand, like a decent chunk of coin. Wall Street? <laughs> No, no, no! They're not on Wall Street. Oh, okay. Oh, well, no, I was about to say like fucking... I was about to say how do they have like hundreds of millions of dollars yeah. to affect the market? Like you they're, know, they're, uh, well, they're... oh, you're, are you talking about just the Bitcoin market or something? No, I'm talking about these people that frequent R slash Wall Street bets that consider themselves autists, and they're putting up like twenty thousand dollars short bets on like let's say Tesla, you know, th- and a lot of this happened prior. So it's just like a fringe market. That people yes. are just allowed to take bets on stocks on. You're betting for the stock to go down. Yes. Yeah. So these people will do that, 
and and just just for the thrill of posting it on Reddit mm-hmm. to see what the community reacts to it. What kind of sauce are we talking? About? <laughs> yeah, like I think they mean tenders, like yeah. where they're get, where they're getting offers. I guess well, they're they're calling it tendies. Tendies so for tenders, so, right? So what will happen? Yeah, let's just say. I mean, tender a, like a tender is an offer. I think like in financial sense. S- yes. Yes. But you're talking about. Yeah, but they all they're saying chicken about a, tendies. I'm talking about tendies. they're trying to be trendy with the tendies. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about I'm talking about a dude that has 20 grand to his name. Right. Yeah. Who's probably worked like 10 years to save up 20 grand. And is like That's What's a up? Lot. What's up fellow autists? I'm fucking putting 20,000 tendies up to short Tesla. Oh, they they're saying tendies for dollars. Yes, they're saying oh, tendies okay. for dollars. Oh, okay. And then every once in a while the market will do its thing. And these people will put up twenty grand and either lose it all and then owe like even more to I guess the IRS. I'm not I'm not sure really how shorts really work. Or um, make like eighty fucking grand in twelve hours. You basically agree to sell it at this at a certain price and then you'll I mean they'll um okay. You agree to sell the sh- the stock at like a higher price then you agree to buy it back at a much lower price. Yes. That's what a short is. Yes. Yeah. So I've seen these screenshots that these people post. And they so basically, could... like, say, like, you know, the person you're in an agreement with, they think the stock is going to go up. Yes. Say the stock gets, like, 65. Yes. And they think it's going to go up, so they agree to, you know, sell their shares to you at this price. <laughs> They'll give you money for, for, like, that much money, the yes. market. <sighs> if it goes down, and, and, you know, you think it's going to go down, so you're like, I'll buy... I'll buy the back at like a you know thirteen dollars a share. So what's the difference? So the diff- So you would be make money on the difference between sixty five dollars a share and thirteen dollars a share. Yes. Right. And I've seen people post these fucking screenshots of them making like eighty grand in a couple hours. And what you're saying this this could just actually just be gambling because you could just say like what's the difference from going to because like because you don't need to own any shares yeah, that's fucking distracting on the thing you're talking about the uh, you don't need to own any shares it's like it's like a derivative you're just you, you don't actually own the the securities no you're like you're you're, you're you're betting on it's like you're one once removed from the actual market of owning securities and selling it to people yes so like it's sort of that's what um that's what caused the 2008 thing is the is, big short. Is those kinds of yeah those kinds of investments and that have you, have you seen the big short yeah a bunch of times have you seen the big short dude i don't watch movies i'm sorry i'm the <laughs> lamest dude in this room right now i'm sorry <laughs> he just doesn't he doesn't watch like financial you know i don't financial watch dramas the internet <laughs> i don't i don't spend i should learn about more of like money in money markets and all that shit i don't care all right, so the heavy risk finance hour is done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Numbers and go like, up and they go down. Like, I this is the yeah. number well, one yeah. thing about money. It comes in and it yeah, goes but basically, out. Basically, Tyler, what you're it talking goes about out a lot more than it comes in for myself. Tyler, the kind of market you're talking about is like was was what made 2008 such a bad recession. Yes. You can cuz you just compounding bets. Basically, you know, basically someone actually owns the shares, they'll sell it to somebody, but if someone on the outside just says Oh, I think that guy is going to win that bet, and then someone outside of him is like, "I think that all of those guys are going to win that bet." Yeah, if and it, lose, it goes on and on if and you on. Lose, it's like you know, Pyramid explanation. Scheme. Yeah, ex- like exponential yes. effect. Yeah. So that that's it's not, probably not a good thing. But if they're only dealing in like twenty grand, as their max is like a big bet for them, then it's not a big deal. Big bet for this these was, guys. They go bankrupt if they don't fucking hit. Well, yeah, what I'm saying is like, and what then caused they kill themselves in the 2008? Post-bound. It was people playing around with billions of dollars that Chatter. way. Yeah. So it was terrible when it crashed. I mean, like, you know. and, and that's what caused the housing market crash in 2008. Correct. Wow. It was artificially propped up. The big Short. You should watch the Big Short. It's actually I, it's I, Steve Carell. I know. I know. I know. It's There's a lot fucking of things Bruce. <laughs> Bruce, Bruce, Bruce. Bruce. Bruce <laughs> the boss is in it. No, what's his name? Uh, uh, Bano. Christian Bale. Bale. Christian Bale. Oh, Brad Pitt. Pitt. Christian, oh, Christian, Christian Bale's in it. Fuck. Brad Pitt. Who the fuck is Fucking Bruce? Ryan Gosling's <laughs> in it. We don't have any money, so we can't be stocks. But like, if we were to go public... <laughs> you want to make can a holding call, company? Can we just call it the Howard Stern um, and Associates? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Howard like, M. Stern. Yeah, Howard, like, I mean, yeah, yeah Jake, or just sure. Sure. Yeah. No, I'm there's sure. so many Howard and Sterns, <laughs> Sterns out there. Yeah. No, I'm, I, so I'm, I'm sure yeah. if we try to use, like, 
the name Howard Stern. It would get red flagged. Oh my god! A so f- I'm sure but those lo- those we... Sirius XM hundred million dollar contract. Oh, yeah. We lawyers. don't have that kind of money. Dude. Oh, he got renewed too. I heard. So he's like a billionaire. Now. Yeah, he's oh, a yeah. billionaire. Yeah. And his show yeah. sucks. Have you fucking listened to it not, recently? No, not, man, uh, I haven't. Not since I was like eighteen. Yeah, 19. yeah. my dad trash. used to love it. Like my dad. We used to I used to like it a lot too. Actually, I mean, I used to think it was hilarious, but it's trash now. Like it's fucking is he, garbage. Is he just like? Is it cringy? He's like fucking one hundred and fifty yeah. years old. Yeah, he's like creepy. But Get it together. Okay, no, I had it right. I watch had... your arm. Welcome to the Heavy yeah. Risk Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Finance Hour. So Bruce, yeah, so Bruce, <laughs> tell me about no more. Um, no more. Uh, astronomical <laughs> events. <laughs> Money, dude. Money and things. <laughs> How does money work with things? <laughs> exactly. They don't. Yeah, uh, you're dumb as shit. Yeah. Is money you actually are real? An idiot. <laughs> no. huh? Money's a fugazi. No, nah, dude. Cash. No, it's, it's cash. Not, so check this out. I mean, it's a. Uh, it, it's based on just belief. Yeah, it's. Yeah, but there's less physical cash. Confidence. There's less. F- hold on, let me finish. What do you mean by physical cash? I'll tell you. <laughs> okay. Because it's never been worth much. It's just it's just paper, you know. Yes, but there's less physical, actual paper, fiat currency. Yeah. Than there are numbers in people's bank accounts. Of course, yeah. I mean, so, that's definitely the way the world's going now. What happens when everyone makes a run on the bank and tries to get all their money out? Why Why would they do that? And plus, it happened you, once before in the and plus Great you would Depression. just. I yeah, but I mean, I think this is like the country was still on a gold standard at that point yeah. I'm pretty sure it was Nixon that took us off the gold standard so now money is only worth everyone else's confidence in the US government including its citizens including the citizens of other countries and that's basically what the stock market that's is. why we're like I mean the US is the most powerful I mean besides the most powerful military we also have the, the most Strongest money economy yeah we have the most money yeah China eventually is going to probably have more money just based on numbers and how fast they're um, just sheer population becoming educated and having middle class people. So yeah, I mean it's just just they're, if they're a successful country, then you know they're gonna be more powerful than the U.S. because they have three times as many people. So it's kind of a scary thought. What? Yeah, I mean, hopefully they're not middle class people that actually have started like all the revolutions and every every revolution in history that's been successful has been middle class people. So. Really, middle class, not so. Like I mean, lower? That, that might be the only hope that you know China has for becoming a dem- democracy. You know, yeah. and not they, just I, being stomped under the foot. Of I feel like the they've government. tried that like so many times. They tried once in like the early nineties. Well, they just at tried Tiananmen a couple Square. months ago. I mean, ago. the government just massacred. It was students. It was college students. Yeah, Tiananmen Square. Um, and the you know, it, it wasn't like you know the U.S. National Guard shooting a couple of, like they, they slaughtered all of them. I mean, you know, the government the the government did not to make light of uh, Kent State, but <laughs> no, I know. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just saying it was way. It was way more. It was way more brutal. What, it was way more brutal. Yeah. But that that happened. Damn. I feel like that happened recently, prior to COVID. Um, they've they've the actually Hong Kong riots. Oh yeah, that, the right? Hong Kong riots. I mean, I, they, more... they've definitely killed people. But I mean, it's um, it's not like Tiananmen. They're not trying to sl- like slaughter everybody. No, you know that's mean? not what yeah. I'm, I'm. I'm not talking about their government. I'm talking about the uprising recent, like the students. Like well, they it's, would be it's because I mean, even even when they were a British colony, Britain didn't really interfere that much, I, from what I understand. I mean, China was a British colony. Um, Hong Kong was. Hong Kong, when yeah. Hong Kong gave it back. I mean, British Brit, England gave it back. I think like ten. I think it was like pretty late. I think it was nineteen ninety one, if I remember. It's like is when they started the transition, and then it was like holy shit! It was so like Hong it was Kong? like twelve years yeah, ago that they British finally gave it away. Yeah. Hong Kong was a like, British there, colony I think there was, until ninety yeah, two. Yeah, I think it was a, there was a years? long trans there was a long transition from when they start England started to move out to when they finally got out. But now yeah, it's, it's I mean it's Chinese now. So, it's owned by Chinese government. Yeah. The Democratic Republic of China. Or what what do they no, call it? The that? Republic of China. No. China. 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 China is considered uh China or <laughs> otherwise known as China. <laughs> People's Republic of People's China. Republic. People's Republic. I was close. You said, I said Republic of China. Well, well that's. Yeah, you, I think that's yeah. North Korea. What yeah. is North Korea? North the Korea. The Socialist Democratic yeah, Glorious yeah, Republic yeah, of yeah, North yeah. Korea. <laughs> the glorious leader of Democratic <laughs> People's Republic of Korea is what it's called. Yeah, bullshit. Yeah, it's. Yeah, there's no God. people there. They're all sheep, apparently. <laughs> I've seen. I've seen again. <laughs> sorry to keep bringing up the documentaries, but I've seen them where the, with the people. 
like this old lady just crying about how much she loves the emperor. Like, I mean, you know, she can't control herself. Jesus, they've got she him got so paid, dude. She brain- got a dick. No, that boy got they, on. She got a they full got, meal that night. They got him so brainwashed over there. I mean, it's crazy. Should we transition to the book? The novella. Sure, yeah, let's so, go yeah, for the so, book. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So okay, we are really bad at introducing guests. First of all, we're really bad at that. Second of all, we're also really bad at talking about what we wanted to talk about. Well, no, Tyler wanted to talk about the finance. Well, stuff yeah, the while. finances, but then this whole part, like, also why you're also here, is because you guys were talking about a new project. Yeah. All right. So, in addition to being a CPA, I did. I got an English degree, and I like you know reading books and stuff. So I said I'd help Tyler out with his uh, novella for a mountain wolf themed. Fantasy novel, basically. Yeah, it's 100%. very cool. Yeah. It's, it's a perfect introduction. Yeah. I don't see yeah. the problem with it. And we got some ideas. Tyler's written a whole first part. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to help with um, just editing and, um, you know, just some cleaning up type stuff with the pros. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I, we're actually uh, going to work on an outline for the whole story, hopefully, yeah. you know, within the next week. Do you, do you want to set a uh, a, a deadline deadline of a week? No, dude. I think by the first of the year, man. I think that's a that's a solid for the deadline. outline. Or I'm not talking no, about just for the- like. Well, for the outline, I'm setting it for you guys. I'm thinking December 28th. Oh shit! Okay, and then we so can like, celebrate it. Don't Cole. know what that is yeah, on, the yeah. thir- on the Oh wait, no, that was the, that's the 25th. Christmas. All right, we let's they're set not, it for yeah, the 23rd. Yeah, yeah dude, Christmas oh, is not doing Christmas. Don't play it on family sucks, Christmas. Man. Yeah, we might zoom you in, dude, or I might like virtually hang out in the woods, which means I'll probably be in the woods. Let's not set a deadline. I already did, <laughs> December twenty eighth, yeah. which is fine. That's like two months. I think we need to go maybe chapter by chapter and take like a week yeah. per each chapter, which will take it That's to twenty weeks. Tyler basically has sent you a kind of just what he's going for, like. He sent out, like, the basis of the story. You know, yeah. like, obviously, like, it's there. Like, this is what he's... Uh, this is the direction we he's going. We got a nice first arc here. And it's... Right. And yeah. then that's where, like, that's where all the meat and juices come from. From, like, you know, like, with you helping him, like, edit stuff. While he's, like... He might he might get on a creative tip and just start fucking right. yammering yeah. out. And then you got to be like, yeah. no, that's not English. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> so I, can, I'm... I, well, yeah. we did make our own language for yeah, the Which book. is rad. Which yeah. is really cool. And it's... So, Tyler, like, describe the book. So, this is a... This is basically a, a novella with, like, all... Like, kind of putting imagery to all of your music, music and... In a way. And your universe it that ties you're creating. the Mountain Wolf universe. Right. Right. It's got more characters than I've realized... Because I haven't revisited there's, it. In there's a, a while. solid ten characters that are introduced. Yes, yeah. Yeah. and it opens with the opening lyrics of "Absent the Moon," "Release me from this prison that you have created for me." Okay, so I'm all right. I'm glad you told me that. I, I wanted so to. I wanted to know how malleable that first line was. It's so that's it's important. Sense. It's important. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. A, a, a lot of. A lot of the dialogue actually stems from some of the lyrics or just ideas of the songs. Just the ways I've heard you and Justin talk a lot of the times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> just, just words. Yeah, yeah, just words. Just words. Not it's really descripting anything. Like, well, the, the, the language. Yeah. The no, yeah, language. I've always thought it yeah. sounds good, at least. I mean, you know, yeah, like, yeah, it's, it's catchy. It's, yeah. it's, it's creative. Yeah, for anything. sure. The uh, Rishkin language is something that my friends... John and Henry and Tyler, rest his soul, uh, would speak to each other when we were teenagers, where we would just be like, just Castella. sounds like Darth Basically, Raki, but before Darth Raki, I guess. It, prior to our knowledge of Darth Raki, it was mainly, uh, it was just a language that we invented that we'd speak to each other. We actually got in bar fights because of this language. <laughs> a, my boy John got a bottle smashed on his face because he was like, Vushtaga! to some guy, and the guy had no clue what the fuck he was talking about, and the dude smashed a bottle on his head, and yeah, I ended damn. up in the hospital for the rest of the night with John. Like yeah, Justin says he goes, he gets into speak. fights every time he goes up to uh, Mount Airy. Like, yeah. People just, just want to fight away, him. Yeah. Stay the fuck away from Mount Airy. Yeah, man, I know. He can't really. Train towns. Yeah. Dude, it's a train no, town? It's landlocked. No. 
<laughs> no, but no, the way you're, you know, the, the, so the creation of this stems from all of your, your stuff with the musical writing you do, your imagination. Obviously, the mountain men are involved. A lot of Gibbs art. Gibbs art, like the, the visual, like, like that, you're trying to describe that to think to people, and then like with the way you, you you're writing, like you said, you're you're utilizing lines from songs and yes. stuff, and then trying to explain the mindset of some songs and in, in a fantasy it, it kind really of way. Create a a, a character esque universe of like the inner workings of the mind. Yeah, my mind. Yeah, it's like mind. medieval punk is what it's, I'm it's, describing. It's, it's, it's pretty steampunk. <laughs> yeah. But there's no, I, I just meant medieval because it's that kind of setting versus it is. It definitely like is. 19th century England. As a huge yeah. fan of like The Hobbit and, and, right, and yeah. then just science fiction as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just in fantasy, just, you know, I, I sat in my parents' backyard one day, wrote the first like four chapters. Uh, on my phone, which all of it was written on my phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Yeah, yeah, you, you're like I can tell. <laughs> well, no, I and, also uh, um, remember the first thing I did was I I just separated it out into more paragraphs and that and kind of shit, and and, and, and like and um, just you know nailing down how words are spelled, that sort of, yeah. that sort of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, you sent, you sent me like a bunch of. No, resources. I meant like some of the characters. You would you would you would like spell their names. Different time, different ways. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Fuck you, Bruce! Figure out how it's spelled." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you made so, so Bruce I, so, wrote the spelling. So I mean, I, I Bruce did. is writing the novel. I yeah. just gave it to him, yeah. and I was like, "Fix it." Yeah, Bruce sent me, dude. Bruce sent me all these resources for like prose and how to write in English, and yeah. I was like, "You already went to school for that, dude. Yeah, <laughs> you dude. do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not really <laughs> English degrees are more like you read books and." Analyze the books. That's pretty yeah. much all. It's like uh, well, you're analyzing. Really, this. The, the job they're setting you up to be is like a lawyer, pretty much. Yeah. Uh -huh. Same, so a lot of, a lot of could you be so a lawyer? Could you, can I call you no, Esquire? I have to go to law like Bruce and Esquire? Pass the bar, yeah, I mean, pass oh. the bar, dude. Yeah. So how high are you going to set that bar? You know <laughs> no, but the, it's rad. I think what you're doing, Bruce, with the with this, like I, I you know, Tyler like talk, talked to me about it and he was like, Oh, I'm gonna write a book and I was like, Okay, dude, that's that's awesome. But yeah. then, you know, he started sending me all this shit and then I started I started reading it and I was like, Okay, this is pretty rad. And I was and he's like asking me for pointers and stuff and I was just like, Dude, I am not the guy to ask how to write a book or like anything like that. I was like, Yeah, I think it's rad, I think the your idea is cool but I was like, My boy Bruce Right. Who yeah. is a huge like reader and like you know you have like some background in this. I was like I think you would for, be for someone a alive better, today. I yeah. would say I read <laughs> for you yeah, read for someone way alive more today, than I anybody. still am mostly watching the movies and TV and shit. But like yeah, yeah I, I mean you know you, you you've read more books than most people have that that are alive today yeah. again. Yeah. And you anything know, and before the radio came I mean, you've always out. said too, story, like, well, yeah. you've always said too that you were interested in writing and stuff like that. So yeah. I was like, yeah, I mean, you well, know. that's why I was like, all right, well, I got a guy. So I, yeah, no, you know, I, I mean, passed the like, buck uh, to you, yeah, and then you're 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 getting into it, and you're looking over it, and it's I think it's really cool. Yeah. It's it's hard work because you know you're yeah, trying dude, to rewrite a, 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 someone else's mind. Yeah, no, I know, and it's also, I mean, like I've I've realized a lot, like what a lot of writers have said that I've read about, like you know, it's not fun. No, <laughs> it's not. It's not fun. It's not fun at all. Like, it's, but I mean, you know, it's it's nice to come up with like good ideas and stuff, but like, yeah. I mean, it's really, it's not like it, it's you not, know, yeah, like, it's not oh, like Secret is, of Kills yeah, yeah. when he's drawn in the yeah, book and shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not like it's, I'm seeing magical colors. Yeah, like, yeah, not yeah, yet, dude, because you're yeah, not on the no, right no. things. Yeah, like guess, maybe yeah, you should maybe you gotta be more zoned in. I guess maybe you should. Take some uh, LSD and then just and rewrite it in hieroglyphs yeah, or whatever, yeah, yeah. or not that, or just you know. Yeah, maybe I'll just or just know. delete it and be like, we're gonna start. This is the book, no, dude. No, no, this no. is it, and it's just like five no. words, and it says, um. <laughs> <laughs> There's no. definitely a good, it's a good skeleton here for a good fantasy story, right? Yeah. Which is uh, that, that's that's the thing is uh, right now it's in the 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 the, the grass roots of everything. Like we're trying. You know, it's it's a whole it's a whole project at this yeah, point. Yeah, no, it's it's just going to require a lot of. I mean, a lot of time and effort. Yeah, 
we're both gonna have to do a lot of work. Right. You know. So it's gonna it's gonna take time and stuff, but uh, the, the, it's very cool so far. Yeah. Uh, like the universe is very chill. It's actually not chill at all. It's very it's but it's, it's very it's descriptive. Like really fucked up. Yeah. And uh, I, I, it's amazing so far. I think it's I think it's cool. You guys talked a little more. We were talking a little bit more. I was just saying how like I basically described how I got Bruce yeah. involved. In, yeah. in everything because you came to me with like the book I was like Justin I'm writing a and, book and then like, that's like, what I said I was like yeah okay Bruce Tyler. is a novelist and then you sent me it and you're like did you no, read it and I was like yeah a little <laughs> bit like, I can't read <laughs> and then I was like I can't read that good and then you're like asking me for like pointers and stuff and I was like yo your ideas are crazy and I, I felt like you know the descriptions of everything was there I could, yeah. I could, I could see this happening and I was like, my buddy, I have a buddy, my boy, Bruce, structure, remember. like structure, structure yeah. you know, and I was structure. like, yo, I think he would be way better at, you know, helping you with just story ideas and, and how to write. Because I was like, your, your boy here, I don't, I don't read books. I don't, I don't do that. Like, I know, I know, no, I know, but, yeah. but you've, I, you've told I just, me. I mean, yeah, yeah, I just, I, my attention span is every time, no. <laughs> every time Justin and I lived together in Glen Burnie. When I picked up yeah. a book, he was like, he was like from Trailer Park Boys, would be like, "Oh, look at Bruce reading books again." <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I would get so pissed off at him when we're like watching. What's the last book? What's the last book you read? Captain Underpants. <laughs> yeah, I bet. And that was like three years ago, dude. No bullshit. Literally, like you reread I, it every three years. Yeah, I like to. I like to get a refresher, dude. I did a, dude, in seventh grade. Did you do a book report? I did a book report on Captain Underpants in seventh grade, and I got in so much trouble from my English teacher. <laughs> seventh because, grade, in seventh grade, <laughs> because because I didn't do it. Like I didn't like we. It was like one of those projects where you have like like five Boy, weeks, oh, you know, like you just you have like. Do it. <laughs> I just was like, I'm not Over doing that months. shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like to do it, and I, I was just like, oh no, I'm not doing that. And then I remember like having to do it. So the night before, I read that book, and I, I went up and did a book report on it, like, all straight-faced. Like, everyone else is reading, like, <laughs> Grapes of Wrath and, like, other, you know, other things like Catch that. Catcher in the Rye. Catcher in the Rye, and I'm over here, like, reading uh, uh, fucking Captain Underpants. No, I just went up That's there. Amazing. I know, I did, I know. And <laughs> I did get? this... I got a D because Suspended. she was like, she was <laughs> like, suspended. she was like, you did that last night, basically. And I was like, yeah, I know. And she's like, that's not but even how the book ended. That that's not, not even how the book ended. It's like, yeah, I got to the first like 10 pages and I, and I just created the story. <laughs> and I did. And I swear to God, I was, I did that and I got a D right. because she was so mad at me for doing that. She was like, you're supposed to read like, and there was like a list of books to read. There was yeah. like 10 books you oh, could you choose. you just went off the cuff. Oh yeah, and I was like, oh, I don't do that <laughs> shit, improv. dude. I do, I'm improv, dude. I was like, I got to I'm off the that. hip. I did and I, I nailed, like dude, I nailed it. Like I just. Do you still have it? No. Your mom doesn't have it Maybe like, she might, dude. I don't know, maybe. Your mom dude. definitely yeah, has it probably, archived. Probably, I should and find it. you're going to bring it on next episode. I don't even know if I wrote it. And we're going like, to read I it. I think I just spoke about find it. it. <laughs> I think I just got up and just did an oral presentation. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. That's how I got through college. Yeah. So I didn't write anything down. I was just like freestyling it. Oh, Jesus. Make sure you hit everything, dude. That's how I got through college. Yeah, well, college was weird for me too, man. Um... Did you have to do any reports in audio school? Yeah, we at the end of the so the big at the end of the school year, like the end of our thing, we did this thing where you sat in front of like a panel of judges, basically, um, with like actual like there was an actual A and R person there. So we were basically selling a band to a label. Whoa, that's that was intense, the thing, dude. So we had to record this band's. Whatever we could pick a band, it was like a whole like month long project where you pick a band, you do one song, a single, and record it, mix it, master it, the whole nine, do all the editing and produce the whole thing in the studio, and then at the end you literally make a you, you write up like a contract with a label saying like this is what we're you know like a business plan basically for the for the band. That's actually really and awesome. You shop it to a label like you literally do it. Yeah, like the whole thing, like from the like everything you do, everything you you like you learn about contracts and everything. So, we sat there in front of like a panel of actual like people from like Capitol Records. Um, I went to Full Sail, so it was like a you know hoity toity fucking school, yeah. but it was like you know, but it was a scam. Anyways, talk about pyramid schemes. Anyways, a lot of people have been very successful. Right, out of true, sale. but you know, also a lot of people like get screwed over too. But yeah, if you don't take it seriously if you don't well not, not only that like most if, college. if you don't like stick around 
that if you don't play the handle game, of America, then they don't take care of you at that's all. That's most places. Right. That's the thing. So, anyways, um, we sat there in front of like a lawyer, like a like an actual like music business lawyer, um, a label representative, an A and R person, and basically just the third person was like the Simon Cow would just shit on you. Like, so what's you're up, like, dude? You're an idiot. What? What's up? You're you guys have nothing. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. Dude, well, you, you know, go shop us. All right. Well, we did. And you we did good. We did good in front of a label. I know. I've never done that. Yeah, and they shed it on you because, like, you you have to like because you send them over what you want. No they, one they, shits just, on you. Yeah, true. But like, I'm just You're saying, intimidating yeah. force in the room. Yeah, so that's what we did. Yeah, no, that's that's what it was though. It was rad. It was a really cool experience, and I did learn a lot from that. And yeah, I did take classes on that. Yeah, I could probably help you, but. I never really thought about it. Like I, we just talked about it. I did just like I kind of blocked that whole. Did you still have those contacts? I still have the binder with everything in it. Uh, the whole break project. it open. Yeah. That's, seriously, we started a band. and We called it Sloven. That's a sick band name. Yeah, and it was literally it meant something what are you guys in talking Russian. About? Justin's. It meant like dirt. Thesis. It meant like dirt or something in Russian. Sloven. Sloven. In Baltimore, that means fucking you going slow, yeah. hon. You going slow, <laughs> slow van. That's a slow van, hon. <laughs> slow van, yeah. He ain't slow got no wheels on there. Um, but no, that's that's what it was. We did a whole thing on it. It was it was pretty rad. But going back to it all, you have to be way smarter than those people up on the on the oh, like yeah. tearing you apart. Well, those but those guys are just like telling like you like, yeah, you're gonna get screwed. Yeah. If this is what you're presenting. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, it was a good I, learning I, I experience. Know, have you guys ever had a fucking sour beer? Yeah. I i don't know I'm if I'm sort of, yeah. I'm, I'm it's sort of. trash. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I I'm a big fan all, of RAR, Maryland yeah. Brewery. Shout yeah. Out. yeah. But Mine are, uh, sour beer's trash. My feelings are a little more complicated. Some, I've had ones where I'm like, that's actually not bad. And then like I've had like others where I'm day. like. Sour beers are a little sus, dude, to me. Like, it just tastes like, it tastes like it's not. Like it was a bad batch of something. Mm-hmm. Well, they tastes so, like salt and vinegar chips all the time. It tastes like bad wine. <laughs> it tastes like like it tastes like leftovers. really shitty carbonated wine. Yeah, like yeah, like the the fermented wine before it's like filtered and everything. It just tastes right. Yeah, like shit. I hate sour beer. I will. N- I'm not a boy. like I said. I've I've had I'm a not a ghost of boy. Yeah. I'm not a sour no, boy. I don't need any of that. Like sand. ghost is a little. I'll try more them tolerable. sometimes, but I mean, yeah. I've I've had bad ones too. For They're sure. terrible. Yeah. I, they all have and it is my probably mouth. it's low on my f- favorite types of. How many beer of these types, can you, you know drink? I mean? None. They're not <laughs> session <laughs> beer. Just, just one. Just, just one. None. Just one. None. Yeah. You can I drink it because your boy. I've never had more than one in a night. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's yeah. not Which something I want to. I want to drink and be like, oh, that's great. Let me have another one. Yeah, I'd be like, you know what? I'm drinking ten of these tonight, boys. I'm getting loose. You know, you're gonna have fucking diarrhea for four weeks. I hope not, dude. That's like kombucha, dude. I like kombucha. Yeah, kombucha is tasty. But kombucha, <laughs> what's kombucha? Again? Tasty. It's like fermented yeast tea. Yeah, yeah, it's like tinnitus. <laughs> it's tinnitus. Tinnitus. Uh, yeah, no, it's a. It, it tastes sour. It's like a tinnitus. It's um, a fucking. Uh, it's fermented. No, it's tinnitus, dude. It's got like bucha in it, dude. Like, <laughs> well, bucha is not a good ingredient. Yeah, well, you know what I'm saying. Like, it's got this bucha at the bottom. Um, it's like yeah. it's yeast. Yeah, but it's heinous, dude. It looks like Can a Can I snot read it rocket. to you? Kombucha is a fermented, lightly effervescent, sweetened black or green tea, commonly consumed for its supposed health yeah. benefit. It's snake oil. It's fermented tea. <laughs> it's it's it live yeast it's, tea. Yeah, dude. It's you've never had it. It's disgusting. It's, it's really not, good not, for you. It's probiotics. Yeah, it's, it's gut health. I have had like good mead, and like that's shit. not super carbonated like beer. But well, I've, mead I've had, I've had is not meats. kombucha. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> that's honey wine, my boy. Yeah, I know. That's good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. I love mead. Mead is delicious. That is sweet berry wine. What are those bee stings? I thought it was made in the same way. Beer was the cherry stout the, and the, meat. Yeah, it's so Tremendous. delicious. I thought Tremendous it was just like a, a stronger ver- <laughs> form of beer, pretty much, was how they made it. What was no, it? That's, I, thought, I thought that was like that's just how, a stronger form of beer is no, how they made beer. No, dude, it's, it's wine. It's, it's just a shittier version of wine. It's 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 honey wine. It's so honey they wine. Ferment, how do you honey. ferment honey? 
Dude, you don't. You well, fucking you use yeast, out. dude. I don't know, man. All right, well, I guess it's not important information. I'll tell you. Mead is an alcoholic beverage created by fermenting honey with water. Okay. Sometimes with various fruits, spices, grains, or hops. It doesn't taste bad. The ones I've had, it's way stronger no, they're than tremendous. beer. Tremendous. The yeah. alcoholic content ranges from about three point five ABV to more than eighteen percent. That is a huge. <laughs> yeah, that's like yeah, that's, that's huge. Just more that's like than the wine. soju. I've I've heard soju from eighteen oh, percent to like shit? yeah, it's good. I dude, mean, have you ever had Korean barbecue? Yeah. If anyone's smoking, it's gonna be me. <laughs> dude. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> no smoking, Holland. This has been the heavy riffs podcast finance hour which went on for two yeah it's a law it's a financial of uh, saga use code heavy riffs at mountainwolf.bandcamp.com for 15 percent off we don't have any other sponsors because we don't frankly give a fuck yeah until one day stay heavy my friends and these food trucks coming at you asap i'm quitting my job <laughs> you heard it here first. Yeah, yeah. and I'm gonna be on the internet. <laughs> yeah, I'm an internet boy. <laughs> All right, good night. All right, All right peace goodbye. out, y'all. Bruce, thank you very much. For yeah, being thank here. you so much for hanging out. Thanks for, us. Us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Bruce, we'll have you. Friend, well, yeah. I fucking love you. I love you. Love you guys. See All you. Right. Good job. Wow. wow. Did I do a good job one. or not? Yeah, yeah you killed it. That was first honestly, two hours. Yeah, Bruce. Yeah, we have never gone that long before. I think we could do. I think we should do another one with Bruce.